I am to properly show and tell you about 2012, the Mayan calendar, a cooperative game, the first thing I should do is read to you the story right off the box, which is something you could do if you found the game in the store, but maybe you're not in a store right now, so I'm going to read you right off the box. The Mayan calendar is something profoundly different than just a system to mark off the passage of time. The Mayan calendar is above all a prophetic calendar that may help us understand the past and foresee the future. It is a calendar of the ages that describes how the progression of heavens and underworlds condition the human consciousness and thus the frames for our thought and actions within a given age. The Mayan calendar is to some people predicting the end of the world, December 2012. For others, the calendar is forecasting the start of a new era. My game incorporates both views. So immediately from the box, which you may not have access to, but I have here, and that's helpful to you, which is why you're watching this video, uh, we can glean a couple of things about 2012, the Mayan calendar, a cooperative game. First and foremost, it's a cooperative game, so everyone's going to win or lose together. Um, secondly, it's, uh, it's a game about the, the myth of the apocalypse, uh, which, which, is some, which is a common reoccurring myth in a lot of different lines of thought and in a lot of different modes, and often, oftentimes a subject of, of cooperative games. There's usually some impending disaster that, um, that everyone is trying to deal with. The game Pandemic, uh, which I think this game probably is inspired by, has the, the apocalypse of, of, you know, Pandemic. Uh, the game Ghost Stories, which is one I have experience f uh, with, has the, the apocalypse of, of the ghosts descending on the town and destroying everything. There's an Atlantis game I haven't played, but it's, it's you know, the apocalypse of Atlantis falling. Now, this game is more like Pandemic in that it, it uses a contemporary setting, actually this very month in which I'm filming this video. Um, and like those games, it's not just the myth of apocalypse, because there are there it wouldn't be much of a game if it were, but it's a it's a myth it it, it also deals with empowerment. So there are ways that the people can um, avert or divert the apocalypse, which certain ap apocalyptic myths don't have. So what you do to divert the apocalypse in this game is you roll dice, um, and then you do four actions. Uh, so first you have to roll dice so that the apocalypse can come, and say if you go to six like I did, you would put this on the six space, which is right there. If I were to, and then you, you roll another die, and then you add that to the first die, and you put that in the, the, the total. So in this case, I rolled a six and then a two, and so I'd put this on an eight. Now, if it was a future turn, and someone rolled a two again, I would move the two, oh no, no, if someone rolled a two and then say a six again, I would move the eight forward, like so. Um, and so the, the red blocks, which are the perils in the game, are kind of uh, what what brings you closer to the bad result. Uh, if they get to these centers of power, see these kind of pinkish squares, those places are doomed. So what the players want to do is they want to use their actions to build up the centers of power. And here's where the game deals with empowerment. So the game posits that you need four things in order to um, create a center of power. And that is materials, money, engineering skill, and manpower. I think that's the fourth. Yeah. If you were playing this game with up to three other friends, you would each get a special ability, a special job. You could be a banker, or an engineer, or a psychic, or a pilot, or a teacher, or a citizen, who, um, doesn't get any special abilities, it's just a person who really wants to help. And it's actually a detriment to the game, because if you didn't have any citizens, everyone would have a special power. And that's an interesting sort of um, uh, uh, point of the game, I guess. I think the intention was to say that anyone can do something to help um, create these pyramids of power, but it kind of makes it seem like if you're not super good at stuff, you're just in the way. You and your three friends are going to use action points uh, to move your pawns here across around the board, mainly going to cities, because cities are where it's at, and to pick up these different um, things that you can then take to places of power and construct 
what you want to construct. Um, there's different kinds of movement. There's land movement, which is you move space to space. That takes an action. You can also move from boat space to boat space, sea movement, or you can move from airport space to airport space, air movement, and those all take one action. Um, and that's the game. The subject matter of this game, as opposed to, um, or as compared with subject matter of other apocalyptic cooperative games, is, is notable in the fact that it's um, contemporary and tied to our world, and yet it still maintains that mythological feel like a game about Atlantis, for example, would have without um, tying itself to any major religion, which could make it controversial. Um, that and the end condition, I think, are what really separates it uh, from the pack. I mean, what you're doing in the game is, is, a, is a kind of a randomized puzzle, very similar to other cooperative games, just kind of working together, figuring out how you can all work together to get things done. It has a little bit more, that feels a, a little bit more um, maybe pertinent because you're all just kind of people with different jobs, like you're a teacher or whatever. Um, and a little more connected to our time now, especially in the month when I'm doing this, though I'm not feeling any apocalypse coming. Um, and maybe that's because of how the game actually ends. So unlike, and this is a very uh, common thing for Family Pastimes, which this is a Family Pastimes game, um, Jim Day Cove uh, design, who I think is probably the one of the first cooperative game designers. 72, I think, 1972, early 70s was his first cooperative game. Well before the cooperative uh, boom that we are in or we're in, I don't know. Um, but the, the thing that really separates it from the other games is the end condition, and that is when the game ends, you don't necessarily lose or win based on how many places of power get corrupted or constructed. Rather, you just discuss how you did <laughs> and take a look at that, which I think is um, a lot more uh, pertinent to to the apocalypse as, as I see it maybe in this world. The future isn't necessarily going to be all gloom and doom or um, all, all sunny uh, golden spaceships. It's probably going to be somewhere in between and where it is and how you got there is really what's um, maybe the more useful information than whether, you know, whether it's black or white. Because the end condition is so indefinite, the game lacks that, ac that accusatory black finger pointing out from the, the game board and s to, to say that you failed when you lose. Uh, it's a lot easier to be complacent with how you play. Uh, you, there's a sense that, yeah, you're doing all right. You're getting some materials. You've got a few pyramids built. So, the, you know, you're not going to... You're not going to necessarily be as efficient with your moves or activate as much brain power or feel that sweat that you might in a, in a diff different, more difficult game that has a definitive win and lose. Um, which I kind of like because it draws the game again to a, a more contemporary space. Um, we are not warriors who are out on a, on a tundra battling for survival. Rather, you know, even though the world might be getting warmer, we are people who have our air conditioners, and we kind of can feel like you know, we're doing well enough, and so maybe we won't try as hard as we necessarily need to because we we won't lose the game. We may not win, but we won't lose. 2012, the Mayan calendar, a cooperative game.